Hey Buns, today I'm taking on the mountainous task of showing you how to get every single mount in Final Fantasy XIV. Remember that to mount up at all, you'll need to have done the quest My Little Chocobo at level 20, and that's after you pick a grand company. I'd encourage you to check out the table of contents for this video, which I will pin in the comments and in the description, so you can easily jump to different sections and use this as a reference material. If you see this symbol, it means the mount is tradable, so you might be able to find it on the market board. If a mount is an achievement reward, you'll need to pick it up from Jonathas near Apkalu Falls in Gridania. I'll also talk about mounts that are no longer obtainable at the end of this video. First up, Gold Saucer. Here you'll play mini games to get a special currency called MGP, which you can trade for mounts and other loot. Here are the various mounts and their costs. Next up, PvP. Now, as long as you are above level 30, you are good to PvP. Everybody's stats and HP are equalized, so gear and levels beyond 30 don't matter. PvP is a great way to get mounts, such as the Aerodynamics system. This comes from winning 100 Fields of Glory frontline PvP matches to get the achievement in a Blaze of Glory 5. Next, you can get the Gloria class airship by winning 200 matches of the Feast. The Logistics System Mount is awarded when you win 200 frontline matches with the same Grand Company. Magitech Avenger is from winning Rival Wings 100 times. Magitech Avenger A1 is obtained by winning Hidden Gorge 100 times. Magitech Sky Armor costs 20,000 Wolf Marks from the Storm Sergeant Wolf's Den Provisioner at the Wolf's Den Pier. You can get Wolf Marks just by participating in PvP. The Safeguard system is obtained by winning 100 frontline matches. The Serpent War Steed is from winning 100 frontline matches with Order of the Twin Adder. For the Storm War Steed, you'll need to win 100 frontline matches with the Maelstrom. For the Flame War Steed, you'll need to win 100 frontline matches with the Immortal Flames. And for Construct 7, you'll need to win 100 Ansal Haker matches. And I just want to add that in the course of me making this video and getting all the footage that I needed of the different PvP mounts, um, all of the people that I met from the PvP community were extremely nice and they went way out of their way to help me find the mounts that I needed to record and they were just super cool overall. They told me to send people over to the PvPaisa Discord server, which is like the balance but for PvP. And who knows, with a bit of guidance from them, you might rank top 100 and get yourself a Manisha's mount. Those mounts will be released to the top 100 players per data center after the current season ends and will not be obtainable after that. The Mentor Roulette is a special duty roulette that you'll unlock by being a PvE mentor and completing every dungeon trial, guild hust, and raid that appears in Mentor Roulette. I'll put a complete list of the content you need to complete to unlock Mentor Roulette, uh, but if you do it 2,000 times, then you will get the Astro to Cedar Pegasus. It looks pretty great, but I asked the person who was posing for this how long it took them to get the Astro, and they said they did Mentor Roulette all day, every day for a year. So, you better strope in for a grind. Every tank can get a basic mount and an armored version of it. So, for Warrior, there's the War Bear and Battle Bear, for Paladin, the War Lion and Battle Lion, the Dark Knight, the War Panther and Battle Panther the Gunbreaker, the War Tiger, and Battle Tiger. Now, Warrior Paladin and Dark Knight's first mount, the ones with achievements that say high level duties, can be farmed on anything level 50 plus that's extreme or savage. So a solo Garuda X unsync would work. The armored mounts for those jobs and both Gunbreaker kitties though, will require level 61 plus content or 50, 60, 70 roulettes or leveling roulettes 
provided those duty roulettes have the daily bonus active. So if you want to grind for the armored tank mounts or for the two saber-tooth tigers, farming Stormblood Trials Unsynced would be a pretty effective way to do that and to collect totems for dogs, which I will get to in a minute. There's the unicorn, which comes from the level 30 conjurer class quest, unicorn power, and the morble, which is a reward for the true blue achievement. Now, this is a pretty tough one, requiring that you clear turn 5 of the Binding Coil of Bahamut, turn 4 of Second Coil of Bahamut, turn 4 of Final Coil of Bahamut, Burden of the Father Savage, Burden of the Sun Savage, and Soul of the Creator Savage in a Blue Mage only party, synced with Silence Echo turned on. Yeah, it's, it's no joke. You'll need a dedicated group for these, and so I'm going to link some Blue Mage raiding discords in the description box below if you're ready to take on <laughs> what I've been referring to on stream as Project Hentai. Good luck. And finally, in the jobs category, if you get all battle jobs to level 80, you will get an Amaro mount. It's basically level until you can say, I'm all out of jobs to level. Next up, recruit a friend. So you can invite a friend to join the game by sending them your recruit a friend code. They can only redeem it after buying the game and within their first free 30 days of playtime. If they redeem your code and then subscribe for 90 days, after their first 30 days, you'll get a draft Chocobo two-seater mount in the mail, the mock mail. Do remember that that 90 days that they pay for does not include the first or free 30 days that they got for buying the game. If you recruit one friend, you will get five gold Chocobo feathers. If your friend subscribes for 150 days, you will get five gold Chocobo feathers. And gold Chocobo feathers can be traded for mounts. So there's the Mana Garm, which costs eight feathers, but... Honestly, save them because it's ugly. <laughs> I think it's probably the ugliest mount. The two-seater amber draft chocobo costs eight gold feathers. I thought amber meant yellow, but it's red. I don't know why. And Twintania costs 15 gold feathers. So good luck recruiting. The main story quest will award you with several mounts just for playing through it. The first one you get is your first mount, the company chocobo. You do your Realm Reborn story quest, pick a grand company, and pay company seals for a chocobo license. You can decorate your company chocobo with various fun chocobo bardings, but there's a lot of them and that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. The Magitek armor comes from the Realm Reborn main story quest, the ultimate weapon. Black chocobo comes from the Heaven's Ward main story quest, divine intervention. Mana Cutter comes from the Heaven's Ward main story quest, Into the Airy. Midgard Zormer from the Heaven's Ward main story quest, Fetters of Lament. And the Yol from Stormblood's main story quest, In the Footsteps of Bardom the Brave. So just another reason for y'all to do, to do it. <laughs> to do the main story. Deep Dungeon is one of my favorite activities in the game, and it's a great way to get some super rare mounts if you're committed. To it. There are two types of deep dungeon in the game currently, Palace of the Dead, which you can unlock from the level 17 side quest, The House That Death Built in New Gridania. You can obtain a disembodied head mount for 10 Galmoran pot shards. You get one Galmoran pot shard for clearing floor 50 of Palace of the Dead, and the pot shards have a random chance to drop from bronze coffers anywhere in Palace of the Dead. Also in Palace of the Dead, you can get a Knight Pegasus. This drops from gold-trimmed sacks, which come from floors 151 to 200, but you will need a dedicated group of the same four people, like a mini, mini static of four people to go with you from 151 to 200. It might take you a couple of days and you will probably need to read up about the monsters in there because once you die, it resets you. It's like game over, you gotta start over. Anyway, have fun with that. Also, there's Heaven on High. That's a deep dungeon added in Stormblood that you unlock with a level 61 quest knocking on Heaven's door in the Ruby Sea. The Dodo is Heaven on High's version of Night Pegasus, I suppose. It drops from Platinum Haloed Sacks, which are obtained in floors 71 through 99 of Heaven on High. You can sell these on the market board as well. And it's really the same thing as before. You're gonna need a, a dedicated group of four people to go in there to progress through on your save. 
Each time you reach floor 100, you will get an Empyrean Reliquary. Get to floor 100 four separate times and you can trade your four Empyrean Reliquaries to the Cast Off Confederate NPC for four Empyrean Accessories. Equip them and talk to him again and he will give you the mount. Next up, Raid and Dungeon Drops. Now there's only one mount that drops from a dungeon. That is the Magitech Predator. It has a chance to drop from Xenos in the Alamigo Dungeon. Now all the rest of the mounts that I'm gonna mention in this section are Raid mounts that have a 100% chance to drop. They're all guaranteed to drop. And depending on when you're watching this video after it was released, some of the raids may be easier than they are now. So if you've gotten any of these mounts unsynced recently, leave a comment saying how hard it was and how many people you needed or if you needed to know any mechanics just to help your fellow mount hunters with the most up-to-date information possible. Next up, trial mounts. And for trial mounts, unlike the raid mounts, they do not have a guaranteed chance to drop. They have a rare chance to drop from the boss itself, but every time you kill the boss, you get a totem, which you can eventually trade in to an item exchange NPC for the mounts. You can trade in 99 totems for a mount, but it usually takes a couple of major content patches after that trial boss was released before you can actually buy the mount with totems. So with all of that said, here are the trial mounts and where they drop.
Now for the beast tribe mounts. As before, I'll be separating the tribes by expansion, and I'll show where you can unlock those tribes and what reputation you need to get their mount. Next up, Hunts. These are different world bosses that you'll need a big group to tank down. To find such a group and to know when the bosses are up, I recommend you join the Centurio Hunt Discord server. I've got it set up to ping me anytime there's an S rank and that's pretty cool. To unlock Hunts for all expansions, you'll need to make sure you've done all the quests that I'm showing on screen now. You can pause it if you need to. And really, you shouldn't miss the opportunity to do the best named quest in the game. The Wyvern is sold for six clan mark logs. You get the clan mark logs for 500 Centurio seals each from Ardelaine in Foundation. You then trade the clan mark logs to Bertana in Idleshire. The Centurio Tiger comes from killing 3,000 A ranks and 2,000 S ranks to get the achievement You Got Game. The Triceratops is from killing 2,000 A ranks and 1,000 S ranks in Norvrant zones. And Forgiven Reticence is purchased from Xyle at the Crystarium or Ilfroy at Yulmore for 3,200 sacks of nuts. You can get your hands on some nut sacks by killing elite marks. Sort of related to hunts are special fates that are big bosses that appear very rarely. You can also track these through the Centurio Hunt Discord server. Ixion is a mount purchased with 12 Ixian horns. The horns are obtained from the rare fate, a horse outside in the locks, and the iron frog mover is purchased from Fathard with 12 formidable cogs. The cogs drop from the rare fate, a finale most formidable in Colusia. Of course, the Mog Station is a place where you can shop for a bunch of mounts. One way to do that is by marrying another player. You'll both need to buy the gold or platinum eternal bonding plan in the Mog Station, do the ties that bind quests, and you'll get the bird. Hopefully your partner will also give you the bird when they find out you married him just for a chicken. The rest of the Mog Station mounts are from the optional items section or from upgrading to collector's editions.
let's talk crafting and gathering. Now there's a couple mounts that you can just straight up craft, like the flying chair, which is crafted by an alchemist, requires eight clouds breath and one Riviera armchair. There is the magic bed crafted by a carpenter, which requires three enchanted elm lumber, four undyed velveteen and four clouds breath. And there is the high bonus, which you get by scoring at least 10,000 points on an ocean fishing trip. Ocean fishing being a new feature that was added pretty recently. Then there's sky builder scripts. So you can collect sky builder scripts by crafting items for Ishgard restoration. The Pegasus costs 4,200 sky builder scripts. It's also sometimes available to get in Moogle treasure trove events. The albino caracal costs 8,400 sky builder scripts. The Ufiti costs 8,400 Sky Builder scripts. And the Dalmel is a possible reward from the Koopa of Fortune minigame in the Firmament. There's also the Pteranodon, which requires you to earn 500,000 points towards your Skyward score as every disciple of the hand and land. This is an absolutely monumental achievement, and I had kind of given up hope on finding anyone that would have this mount that I could record for footage for this video. But with the help of a friend who speaks some Japanese, I hopped over to the only person that I knew had it in the entire world, a person on a JP server. And um, they put up with me, uh, allowing me to get a bit of footage of the Pteranodon. So I'm happy to show that footage to you now. Next up, Eureka. Eureka is its special set of zones with tough monsters in it and an independent leveling system that was introduced in Stormblood. I'm gonna direct you to a Discord for this one as well, which I will drop in the description box below. Tyrannosaur drops in Anemos via Anemos lockboxes, which are obtained from Anemos Fates. The Eldthors drops from gold bunny chests from Bunny Fates in Eureka Pyros. The Eurekan Petrel drops from gold bunny chests from Bunny Fates in Hydados. And Demi Ozma drops from the final boss of Valdesian Arsenal in Hydados. And that is a 56 man raid. It's going to take a bit of organization and work with other players to get. Next up, Airship Expeditions. There's only one mount for this because it's kind of a miscellaneous category. You get a zoo for one Iron Voyage spoil at any resident caretaker in any housing district. You get the Iron Voyage spoil by sending your free company's airship on an expedition to Sector 24. Next, player commendations. You get 500 commendations from other players. You'll get a gilded Magitek armor reward. And the Parade Chocobo is a reward for getting 3,000 player commendations. Achievement points is another way to get mounts. You'll need to talk to Jonathas in Gridania near Apkalu Falls to exchange your points for achievement certificates, which you can then exchange for mounts. This is also the NPC you'll need to talk to to get mounts that you've earned from different achievements. Here are all the mounts you can buy with achievement certificates. And finally, I wanted to show you all of the unobtainable mounts that are no longer available in the game, but are still pretty nice to look at.
Guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you and has inspired you to maybe look into different parts of the game that you haven't explored before to get some of those cool mounts. If you did find this video helpful, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support the channel for free by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow warriors of darkness. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.